to convert an existing ES2 module level, which is this guy right here, to a new E3 head, here's what we're going to do. We're going to remove the old ES2 head so you disconnect any wiring that comes into the ES2. Behind the display, you'll have your wiring tab. So disconnect your two-wire loop that comes in, assuming it is a two-wire device. There are some 120-volt versions of this, which would be a little different wiring-wise. But you'll pull all your wires off. And then we're going to remove this entire head assembly in order to replace it with the E3 head assembly. So to do that, we are going to remove the three Allen screws, which are a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. And I've already kind of got these loosened up, so I'm just going to give each one a slight turn here. They'll probably be a little tighter on your head because they've probably been out in the field. So make sure you get yourself a good, good Allen wrench to loosen them up with. Once you have those loosened up, uh, you're going to loosen those up and then, I'm sorry, you need to also remove a C-clip that is up here on the top, this brass colored C-clip. It's a uh, spread clip. Take that off. It's a little silver washer right there we can remove. And then we can lift the entire assembly off. Mine's a little tight here, so I'll try to hold this. There we go. And that lifts the entire assembly off. Now notice you still have your enclosing tube. You have not broken into the process. This entire procedure did not break into the process. We did not open up the pressure boundary to do this. So we can now take our new E3 head and you remove this. There's not going to be an enclosing tube inside there. There will be what we call a fake enclosing tube that's holding this LVDT and the little washer and C-clip in place. So be sure to remove the washer and C-clip and pull the fake enclosing tube out. And this, this is simply going to slide back on where the old one was. Be careful, there is a little white plastic piece down in there. It's probably pretty hard to see. You can kind of see it. Make sure you just don't lose that. That's going to slide on. And then this will slide on. Just like that. Tighten your Allen screws, and it's rotatable, so figure out what orientation you want. Oops, I'm missing a screw there. Tighten them up. Take your washer and C-clip. And that's all the labor of replacing the head. From there, we're going to power this up and run through a quick, quick setup procedure. Once you have your head installed on the old ES2 top hat, you are then ready to power it up with a two-wire loop, positive and negative. And then we're going to run through what we call a user setup on the device, and we'll show you how to do that. Uh, you'll need to move levels if possible, and if you can get to two different levels, that would be good. We're going to simulate level movement on our test stand here by, with this LVDT core that we can move up and down. You can purchase this test stand if you wanted to use this. Um, but if you can move levels, that would also work. So I'm going to start with a simulation of the level at zero, or an empty tank. And then we'll go through the procedure here. From the run mode or scrolling mode here, you push the up key. 
It's going to say display fact, no. Push enter and down arrow or up arrow to change no to yes. Push enter. Now scroll down to Cal Select. It'll say factory. Push the enter key and change factory to user and push enter. We are now in the user Cal mode. And when you enter into the user Cal mode, you'll see the LVDT percentage. This is a sort of a real time reading of the LVDT percentage. So as I move the LVDT up and down, you can see that that's tracking it. So we're going to look at that LVDT percentage and set that into the program that we set up here. So from there, I'm going to hit the down arrow. It'll say dry sensor. That was what the dry sensor was set at. And we're going to go to the sensor cal low point. So I'm simulating zero level on the probe. My LVDT position is 39.80. So I'm going to enter sensor cal low at 39.80. enter that. Now that's no liquid on the displacer, so I want that to be represented by a zero inch reading on the displacer. And I want zero inches on the displacer to give me a four milliamp output. If I wanted it to be something else, I could simply enter and raise that up if I wanted zero inches on the displacer, or if I wanted, let's say, one inch on the displacer to give me four milliamps, I could change that and enter it in that way. So we'll keep this at zero right now, so bottom of the displacer will give us four milliamps. And then we go to our sensor cal high. Now you'll need to raise the level, so if you can put a hundred percent level on the displacer, that's fine. If you had a 48 inch displacer and you could put 48 inches in the tank, that would be fine. But let's say you can't. Let's say you can only put 50% in or 24 inches in the tank. I'm going to simulate my 50% on my core stem here. So I'll put that at 50% and we'll enter, enter that into the user menus. So sensor cal high. Go back to our LVDT, and that's 53.98. So we're going to enter that into the sensor cal high. Enter and up arrow to 98, 53.98. Enter that. Now, the level cal high, if this was a 48 inch displacer, the 24 inches is appropriate for a 50% level. If I had 75% level on a 48 inch displacer, that would be a 36 inch level. If I had 100% on the 48 inch displacer, that would be a 48 inch reading that I would want to see. So we're going to keep this at 24 inches. And then our set 20, uh, we want 20 milliamps to read out if this was a 48 inch displacer at the top of the displacer. So when the device reads 48 inches, we want it to output 20 milliamps. So we will leave that there. And down arrow, and when you see escape, you can just push enter. And you can then down arrow back to your run mode. Oops. And there's our run mode. So now, if we kind of can turn this a little bit, and you can kind of see the LVDT core. Right now the LVDT is at 50%. And you can see we're just about at 24 inches, 50%, and 12 milliamps. I will go ahead and change it to basically a zero reading on the displacer. So we'll push that LVDT core down to simulate zero inches on the displacer. And you can see we're showing basically an output of zero and very close to four milliamps there. You can raise it up to 100%. Pretty close to 100 there. And you'll see we'll be at uh, 
20 milliamps or so, closer to 48 inches. I'm off a little bit there. Let me bring it up a little bit. And if I drop it down to 75, we'll see 36 inches and 16 milliamps, about 75%.